G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, bit of a late one for me, so it's Sunday night here in Australia, nearly 9 o'clock at night, and this is going to be a very quick video. There's not really a whole lot of news going on, but we need to have a look at the markets. The charts are looking very, very interesting, and just the market in general. So we're still under 1.5 trillion, around about 1.445 trillion, so just under that. Now down a little bit. But again, it is kind of Sunday. Sunday's usually the day, you know, thereabouts anyway, the weekend, when things kind of get to their lowest. You can generally kind of sell around about Thursday night, rebuy back in on Monday, uh, and turn a bit of a profit. It's not going to be a lot of profit, but, you know, if you're a big player, you definitely could do that. Uh, well, look, not financial advice, just personal opinion, but that's generally what happens with the market. And first thing Monday morning, uh, it picks back up. Uh, a little bit. Unless you're in a full bear market, then things are going down. Bitcoin's still just ranging. But look, the volume super low. So I mean, you know, yeah, super low compared to what it normally is. But that happens over a weekend. And just where the entire markets are at the moment as well. Bitcoin, 43.8%. So just under 44%. And ETH dominance still around 17%. And gas prices, good Lord. <sighs> Five. I can't remember the last time we saw five. It has got to have been months and months and months since we saw five. So there's a whole lot of things that are making me think that a really big move is coming and it's probably going to come this week. No guarantees in life, not financial advice. And look, I can't tell you exactly which way it's going to go. I'm hoping it's to the upside. But, you know, I am somewhat nervous that it could be to the downside. But anyway, let's have a look. Bitcoin, still around 33 held that $31,000 market, just would not go under. So that was really, really nice. It was looking shaky, uh, and I was really worried if we went under 30,000, things could have got a little bit ugly. But it's held that 30, kind of 32-ish thousand thereabouts. It's held really, really well. And Ethereum's still at 2,100. All right, we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag, though. Like seven days, some things are up, some things are down. And look, they're up and down, all dependent on the 24-hour volume at the moment. It's really hard to keep up with it all over the place. But let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours? Has anything really mooned? Right, Flow's done all right. They've had a good week in general. Stax has had a good 24 hours and a good week. Uh, the Graph, um, making some comebacks. Nice. Cosmos. So look, there's a few things here that have done pretty well in the last 24 hours. So that's really, really nice. And definitely we've seen a few coins have a really good sort of seven days. So again, I just get the feeling like it's going to be this week, something big is going to happen. And Bitcoin's going to lead the way. Bitcoin is going to, it's tightening up so much. It's coiling up at the moment. You know, I'm hoping it's to the upside, but I am just, you know, in the back of my mind prepared that, hey, this could go lower. And look, my thoughts are, if it goes lower, I'll just accept it. And I'm just going to continue to buy more. Because it means the next time it goes up, I'm getting better and better entry points at the moment. I haven't bought any Bitcoin uh, you know, at its all-time high. Not even close to its all-time high. I think the most I ever bought any Bitcoin for was $39,000. And then I bought some at thirty four, dollars And then I bought some at around about sort of thirty-one, thirty-two thousand. dollars So if it goes lower then I'm all good. I know that, you know, when it gets back to its next all-time high, I'm basically doubling whatever money I put in. Doesn't mean it can't go in reverse for a while, maybe a couple of months, maybe a year or two. That's totally possible. But I am happy to buy things at discounts. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as I believe in it, thinks a good, think it's a good project, I'm happy to buy it at any kind of discount, no matter what it is. Don't get me wrong, not a dollar or two, unless it's only a dollar or two all up, because then you're getting a 50% discount. But, you know, like I'm not happy to buy Bitcoin at $63,000 when its all-time high was 64 unless, you know, I'm really thinking long-term. And don't get me wrong, I am, but I'm just, I'm not as happy to buy Bitcoin at those kind of prices. So any price around this $30,000 mark or definitely lower, I am more than happy to buy it. And, you know, even though it would hurt, if Bitcoin was to go into kind of a bear market and we see, you know, a couple of months of downward action... I am actually really happy about that because it means I'll be able to buy more Bitcoin uh, and, you know, do even better when the next run comes. Now, again, I'm not trying to be overly bearish. If that happens, I'm prepared and I'm just going to make the most of it. I'm going to, you know, buy as much as I sort of can before it starts to make its way up. 
but you know, I th I'm I'm hopeful that we're going to bounce to the upside in the very near future. But again, look, I don't know it all. None of that's financial advice. That is just my gut feeling. So things doing well. What about not so well though? What about in the last 24 hours? Has anything been hit? Right, Telecoin down a little bit and look, not having a good week for them. Huobi uh, BTC, that's just basically following the normal kind of Bitcoin price. It's all really single digit losses. Nothing's been hit sort of too bad in the last 24 hours. But there were a couple of gains that were nice. And what's funny about that is that the market is down though, 0.4%. Now look, that's hardly down at all. And I just get the feeling excuse me, like a lot of those losses, not that there was a lot, they probably came from outside the top 100. I would say it's, you know, a lot of coins, you know, uh, a lot of the smaller, really sort of speculative stuff probably took uh, the brunt of that. But again, it's not down that much, but that's where I think most of the losses have probably come for. All right, last but not least, let's get onto the Bitcoin chart. And this is why I am, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm optimistic, but nervously optimistic. I can't think of the word. It's completely slipped my tongue. But here's why. Again, look at these Bollinger Bands. They are super tight at the moment. When these Bollinger Bands get tight, usually a big move happens. Unfortunately, it was to the downside here, but sometimes it's also to the upside. And at the moment, these are really tight. You don't often see the Bollinger Bands get this tight on Bitcoin. Now, this could travel sideways for like a week or two. That's definitely possible. I just don't know if that's going to happen, but here is why, and I've showed this before. The RSI, we've been in a bullish divergence for quite some time from the peak of this dip right here. This is where it started to get bullish on the RSI. The price has, you know, kind of chopped around a little bit, but it keeps setting new highs on the RSI. And here was where I thought we were going to break it and go under. We didn't. We bounced and we held up and we're still holding above this. So things on the RSI are looking bullish. Doesn't mean they can't turn bearish, but they are just looking really good. Look at that, holding that green line. And also here, we can see we had a positive crossover. Then we had a negative crossover that didn't last for long. And then it got positive. And here, look at it. It's just, they're tiptoeing along each other at the moment right now. This is just, it's set up for a big move. Now, I did see something on Twitter before that someone thinks that, uh, I forget who it was, one of the big companies, I think it might be Apple or somebody, and again, this is just a rumor that I read on Twitter, that Apple might be coming out with some news that they bought $2.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. That is the rumor that I read on, tw on Twitter. Nothing's guaranteed, nothing's you know sort of solidified, no, no official word or anything like that. If that is the case, come sort of Monday morning, Tuesday or whatever, sometime next week, Bitcoin is going to moon hard. And it's not going to moon hard because that's what uh, Apple buying Bitcoin has done, like them physically buying it. It's something that they've already done. They buy it OTC. So that hasn't really changed the price. It is what it's going to do for all the other investors out there. They're going to go, what? Apple just bought Bitcoin? And they bought, or Microsoft, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Apple. It could be Microsoft. I should be able, I should have the tweet up here, but I was looking at uh, the tweet on my phone. So anyway, there's the rumor, $2.5 billion. I mean, that's another billion dollars on top of what uh, Tesla bought. So imagine how much that is. And they're going to have bought it for around about the same price. They possibly were kind of buying the dips and they might have been lucky enough to be getting it for, you know, sort of $30,000, $28,000, $29,000. Because that's how it works when you buy OTC. If you buy enough of it, you can get a good discount and you're buying it at a cheaper rate than it's than is on the spot market. But the spot market does drive the price though. So I just get the feeling like there might be a big announcement coming soon and it's just going to get everyone going, if Apple's buying it, I'm buying it. And all these other businesses are going to start to do the same as well. And that's what I sort of think is coming. And again, I can't, I wish I could remember. It was Apple or Microsoft, one of them two, probably Apple, I think. And again, the rumor was that they bought 2.2, sorry, $2.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. That is going to set the market on fire 
and things are going to heat up and go very, very quickly. And again, that may well push Bitcoin to, you know, up towards $100,000. And again, it's just because everyone else gets excited. It's not Apple physically buying the Bitcoin that pushes the price up. It's what it does to market sentiment. All of a sudden, everyone goes, hang on, one of the biggest companies in the world just bought a whole stack of Bitcoin. This stuff must be good. Now I'm going to get in. And a lot of that will be sort of retail FOMO as well. And that is going to push the price super high. All right, look, that's it for me. I'm not going to drag this on. It's already a little bit late here and there's not a lot of news. We'll have to wait and see whether that Twitter rumor is true. And I reckon if it is, that is going to be the spark that is going to start to push things up. Then we need, you know, some more good news. Again, maybe some, you know, good regulatory news like a Bitcoin ETF and things like that. That is what's really going to set things off and make it just go extra high. But that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you because the market's down just a fraction. And I'll see you next time.